that speech, which again was, was supposed to be about the Air Force and football, President Trump uh, brought up the wall as well. He even, even seemed to politically threaten any member of Congress, Republican or Democrat, who opposed it. And make no mistake, we are beginning to build the wall and we will keep out the gang members, criminals, drug and human traffickers that threaten our citizens and that threaten our security. Any member of Congress who opposes our plans on border security, and I know these folks didn't, is only empowering these deadly and dangerous threats, and we will not put up with it, and the public won't put up with it. Rodney Davis is a Republican congressman from Illinois. He is a member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Uh, congressman, I want to get your, your opinion of the speech in just a moment, but first of all, do you think it was appropriate to, to go after members of Congress using members of the armed forces as a backdrop there? Well, let's give the president some credit. He talked about a historic increase in military spending at an event where we had military members, regardless of whether or not it was a sporting event ceremony or not. And I think the president's not getting enough credit for helping to avoid a government shutdown just just north of his 100-day anniversary of being in office. Well, to be and clear, that's something the president needs to talk about. C Congressman, to be clear, though, I mean, we perhaps would have had a shutdown had he continued to insist on funding for the border wall. Well, the president clearly has gotten historic amounts of funding for border security. What that method is over the next seven months of this fiscal year is yet to be determined. And I believe the American people spoke that that was one of their priorities because it was one of his priorities during the campaign. Let's pivot to health care. Uh, the bill in its current form, are you going to vote for it? I, I'm a yes. I've been an advocate because we, we've got to look at the facts here, Craig. The facts are 29 million Americans right now under the Affordable Care Act still do not have insurance, even though the law requires them to. Another 31 million, Craig, have insurance that they can't afford to use. Premiums skyrocketing in the individual marketplace. If we don't do something, then we are abdicating our responsibility as policymakers. And I wish the Democrats who gave us this bill I wish they would come to the table and offer their suggestions for this fix that they keep talking about, but we don't see. Late night host Jimmy Kimmel, as I'm sure you've heard or read, uh, getting a lot of attention today for a very personal story uh, that he shared about his newborn son and, and health care in general. Um, these highlights are a bit long, but, but well worth the time. We've trimmed them down. I want you to take a listen, and we'll talk about it on the other side. Here it is. A little over a week ago on Friday, April 21st, um, my wife, Molly, gave birth to a boy, a baby boy. His name is William John Kimmel. A very attentive nurse at Cedar sinai Hospital, her name is Nanoush, was checking him out and heard a murmur in his heart, which is common with newborn babies, but she also noticed he was a bit purple, which is not common. But they did an x-ray, and his lungs were fine, which meant his heart wasn't. So now more doctors and nurses and... Uh, equipment come in and it's it's a terrifying thing so we put the baby in an ambulance to children's hospital los angeles and on monday morning dr starnes opened his chest and fixed one of the two defects in his heart he went in there with a scalpel and did some kind of magic that i i couldn't even begin to explain he opened the valve and the operation was a success. It was the longest three hours of my life. You know, before 2014, if you were born with congenital heart disease like my son was, there was a good chance you'd never be able to get health insurance because you had a pre-existing condition. If your baby is going to die, and it doesn't have to, it, it shouldn't matter how much money you make. That, I think that's something that, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or something else, we all agree on that, right? I mean, we do. Did your, uh, did your side make a mistake going after pre-existing conditions? Our side didn't go after pre-existing conditions. Pre-existing conditions and the 10 essential, essential health benefits in the Affordable Care Act still remain. Pre-existing condition coverage will remain. And I, it's just tragic to hear the story of, of Jimmy Kimmel's son. And that's a story that, that is in many hospitals throughout this nation every single day, which is why we want to protect that. Look, my wife is an 18-year colon cancer survivor. She was told when she was misdiagnosed that it was in her head. 
We've stayed in, I stayed in a job to keep the health insurance I had because of her pre-existing condition. That's why I believe that our policies will protect everyone, including Jimmy Kimmel's son Congressman, and my wife. Congressman, the Kaiser Family Foundation says that, that the bill in its current form does not contain any specific language about premiums, about benefits or eligibility. Basically, you may say you cover pre-existing conditions, but the language is, is so vague that the bill doesn't really say that. Are you saying right now that, that that's not the case, that we've all gotten it wrong? I am saying that it's wrong. We are covering pre-existing conditions as part of the tenant federally mandated essential health benefits. Many states, including mine, have more essential health benefits. And when we continue to, to address a waiver process that no one has actually picked up the phone and called any governor to ask if he or she is going to apply for this waiver, they would still, even if they applied for a waiver, have to guarantee pre-existing condition coverage. And it's got to meet a set of standards that are that relate to access, accessibility, and coverage, and affordability before they can even bring an innovative idea to the table. So those are the things that I believe that are wrong in this debate uh, when people try and mischaracterize what's actually in the bill. Congressman Rodney Davis from Illinois trying to clear up some of the confusion this afternoon. Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.